Um, so I'll tease a couple of things that we're working on um, and rolling out actually this week. We started rolling it out last night, um, which was our new league landing page. So um, leagueos.gg proper now um, is becoming kind of a more discovery area. It's kind of always been on the to-do list. And so we're starting with this. Um, we'll see eSports Ohio right there. Um, all the other state leagues will start to be populating this area as well. Um, our MIG-3 collegiate leagues, some amateurs, different things. Um, you should be automatically logged in if you head over here from any of your league sites now. So that should carry us along. Um, started moving some of our old stuff from the old site over. Um, and this is going to be our new home as we go forward. Um, the big push with this, uh, this new site is actually our... Uh, prospect area. So um, that's funny, that one's not there. Um, so as a user, you can jump in here and you're actually going to see uh, recent matches, your schedule matches, uh, what leagues you play in, activities, um, and all stats that are going to start populating here. Um, and then we have this prospect stuff, which I think we've started teasing. Um, this is this is an area that is private to you on your account, and then it will be part, parts of it will be accessible and searchable by recruiters at the collegiate level um, for your high school students. So if you're a coach and looking for ways to start getting your kids money uh, for scholarships, um, this is going to be the easiest way forward. Um, to start, basically we all we're asking for is graduation year, just so we understand uh, what cohort they're going to be in. Um, so we can make sure we help that. Um, it is an opt-in, so if your players come in, they're going to be they're gonna, they start in kind of like this unknown pending state, so they're searchable at like a high level, um, but there's not a whole lot of data that we provide to recruiters, and the recruiters can kind of poke them and be like, hey, would you fill out your profile more? We're interested in, you know, what activities you've played, um, your stats, and different things. And then if the students want to come through. They can mark that they're looking for a team, committed, or they're not interested, basically. Uh, they can also just straight up opt out and get out of the whole system if they want. It's no big deal. And uh, if they're looking for a team, um, since I'm old, it doesn't ask for my guardian information, but we are going to have a guardian ID uh, requirement. So they're going to have to pop in an email address of a parent, and they're going to be setting up a guardian account and attached to it. So all conversations and all... Um, communications are going to be done on our platform under the purview of parents and or coaches so coaches can act as guardians as well um, so it's all going to be on platform and controlled environments in that regard um, they can come through and they'll be able to put in all the different you know this is the we're getting into the PII area which I totally understand is uh, a questionable area believe me we are doing this with the utmost of care because um, it is sensitive data but Drop in your names. Um, different scholarships require different types of things for demographics. So you can drop in your race, ethnicities, different pieces that you have there. Uh, religious schools like to know. Um, so you can provide that if you want. Again, you can delete all this data and just not provide it. It's all opt-in. Um, and again, all this data is only available to basically coaches and recruiters um, from the schools who do have two-factor authentication enabled. So it's locked down and isolated at the regard. And they go through a pretty good vetting process to get access into this backend portal that we're developing. Graduating year, GPAs, degrees. Um, this is the official degree list. So we'll be able to cross-reference and cross-match these degrees with schools out there that are of interest. Um, you can choose what regions you're interested in, whether it's like Northwest, South, New England area, Middle Atlantic, um, or online remote, and then also provide um, specific schools if you're interested as well. And then we're looking for different types of player roles, team roles, since it's more than just players that schools and universities are interested in. They're interested in, you know, social media managers, analysts, um, game managers, casters, broadcast team, all those different things. So whatever you're interested in there. And then they, all the high school students, kids should be listed as scholastic. Um, collegiate also plays a role. But. You can come through and obviously I'm a part of too many leagues since I, you know, basically a member of all of them. <laughs> you can do that. Um, but then you can add what games you play. So if you play Apex, you can just add that to the list. That'll pull it up. And then since I have my PlayStation account there, it'll provide a direct link out to the rank data as well. 
Um, if you put in CS2, I'll probably pull out your, I don't have my Steam account connected, so it's not gonna go there, but provide that. And then that's the rank information for the coaches uh, or the recruiters that are interested. And that'll show up over here. And we'll start pulling in rank data long-term for that as well. Um, so this is gonna be kind of the overview um, for that. And then as the student, you'll be able to go to our um, under development, oh, let me go over there, uh, portal site. Uh, which is right now it'll take you to a nice coming soon page. Um, I'm working on this right now actually. Uh, but this will let you actually search schools that line up with your degree interests, your regional interests, um, potentially ones that are looking for your types of game roles. If you play a tank in Overwatch and you're, you know, Grandmaster 2, you know, you'll, it'll isolate and find the schools that have uh, identified that those are the types of roles you're looking for. So we're just kind of pulling it all together um, at this point. but. This is what is going to be rolled out. I think, um, I believe, um, I think, Wilhelm, I think you guys are, have thumbs up to, the, to push the graduation year request onto your league, I believe. Um, that looks like, let me see if I can see what that looks like. I have to undo something to get that one going. Let's see if I set that to zero. Um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, prompt, and I'm not going to be able to show it unless I create a new account. It just pops up a thing that just has tells the kids, like, hey, we're launching this cool thing, put in your graduation year, hit OK, and then it shows them a link to head over to here where they can quickly and easily just say, looking for a team, not interested, or just opting out um, from there. Um, this data is locked down pretty heavily. I haven't you know, made that clear at, at this point. Um, so not available to anyone, just the people that we approve. And then this is gonna be eventually the uh, final destination for a lot of like account management as well. So we're gonna move some things out of your leagues and over here. Um, you can manage your trophies as well. So I can throw my trophy up here. I don't know if it will show up or not. Let's see, yeah, trophy case, although it's a junk trophy. Um, so there's some fun stuff that we're working on here, rolling this one out. So that's kind of where that's at. Um, and uh, if it wasn't clear, this is going to be free for all students that are participating in leagues on League OS. Um, they'll get a free student account, and then there will be there will be some paid upgrades if they want to make their site or their profile look cooler and get some other priority type stuff. But by and large, uh, the goal here is to make sure that it is available and useful to everyone who wants it um, on League OS uh, for the students. So trying to live up to that promise of helping the kids control their data, and then we will help them monetize it. In the sense here, we're helping them monetize it by helping them find scholarships, by opting in to sharing a small amount of data uh, to help match them with the correct um, collegiate recruiters. So we had a big panel last night uh, with college coaches and some players, and all of them are just desperate and anxious <laughs> to get connected with your students. Um, and find them a home at the university level because there is a lot of opportunity for scholarships out there, um, both from the NECC schools, which is over 400, and then the NJCAA is coming on this month. That's another two to 400. So there will be 800 some odd schools out there looking for you know, ways to find your kids and give them an, a scholarship and offer to come to their school. So. Um, yeah, that's where I've been focusing a lot of my time. Um, it's finally kind of getting close to the finish line here, so I'm excited for that. And yeah, it's, that's what I've been working on. There's the, uh, I think it's just the three of you. Um, you know, on top of that, we have Scholastic as well, which, you know, we continue to beat the drum on the drumstick dash here at the moment. Marty indicated that we're going to do some middle school events. Uh, we're thinking about it coming up. Um, I don't know what we're going to be doing over the holidays. We typically, just like everyone else, holidays get busy. So trying to get kids to do things during the holidays is a big chore. Um, so we probably won't do too much there. <laughs> um, we'll probably kick some fun stuff off in the spring or in January um, once we're past the new year um, and start doing things. But trying to get into more get more and more activity on this site um, as there's interest. Um, we do have good prizes coming through, so um, these are definitely worth the time, I think, for your kids to come through and play 
get some more experience. This one was our Rocket League. I'm curious how that went. Well, it looks like Lincoln Way East High School is, wow, dominating. 6-0. Hmm. Um, that's impressive. So, they have the scores on the goals in here. No, they don't have that on the cards. Um, Springfield's in there. Otherwise, that's where we're at with things. Um, as far as like managing your school, since we were just in there. Oh, you want to speak? Yeah, bring you up. I mean, you can keep going if you wanted, but I did have a few questions. Yeah, go for it. Um, so I'm getting ready to seed my playoff stage for my middle school. Yes. Um, there's a way, like I know how to add all teams to the stage that are registered for that competition, but can I then remove one after I add them all, or do I have to add individually since I want to remove one? So the the changing the seeds right now is totally broken. <laughs> oh. The seeds is fine. The seeds is working by pulling it from the other stage, it looks like. Oh, okay. But, but you... I just want to remove a team from the competition. Um, yes, I'm, I'm concerned that, that when you if you if and when you remove them it's going to mess up all the seating um values oh, okay. it just it's just a it's something I, I desperately need to get around to fixing which which uh event are you looking at working on right now uh i'm in indiana but sorry you're in the ohio page i was like <laughs> yep too many uh Imsen varsity rocket league or i can share my screen if you give me permissions either way which one is it i'll just jump in there Imsen Varsity Rocket League. Imsen Varsity Academy. I'm back, by the way. So, like, I made a fall playoff stage. I know how to add all the teams. That's fine. But there's actually a team that has forfeit all their matches, so I want to drop one of them. So, is there a way to remove... Not from fall. I want to leave them in fall, just not add them to playoffs basically yeah which one um isn't coming in blackford and are they are the results are you wanting them seated as this coming in right Correct. here okay Correct. well you're so you're in luck so this the best way to do this is to since there's 13 teams and 13 is going to be dropped right. um the best way to do this is to do your setup and go to see from other stages to fall and yep. then just do a top cut of 12. Um, I didn't think about that. Just bringing in only the 12. Yeah. Okay. And that will, so if I hit plus here, that should just drop them right in and it should bring them gotcha. in. So let's see, TCMS is number 12. So if I take a look at that results from here, yeah, that's correct. So is it the, the seating is again, one of those things where it's a little iffy. So that looks correct right now. Yeah, and then yep. once I generate the bracket and commit the matches, like the teams show up on the individual match page, but on, oh, never mind, they do now as well here. That was weird. Yeah, so once they're, yeah, so it looks like you made the bracket for 12 already, but yeah. I just did it. So before when I had 13, it generated the bracket correctly, but it didn't bring the teams over. Um, yeah, the teams weren't added to the, added to the stage yet, so that's probably I had why. removed them. I had, I had oh, them. Oh, you had added, them? I removed them. Oh, yeah, okay. so it was weird. I don't know if, what was going on, but it looks fine now. Yeah, it probably was a seating problem where it something... It might have been the seating issue. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you cool. have to, so the top cuts work great, um, to get it to the right ones. If you, if you have to edit a seating value or disable a team, remove them, you're better off um, actually just pulling up a second window and adding them one by one in order from seed one to the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. I know it takes a little bit of eff extra effort. It'll take you five minutes instead of five seconds, but it's gonna, yeah, it's it, yeah it'll be the, <laughs> it'll save you time. I mean, I, we should only be dropping schools if they forfeit anyway, so they should be at the bottom. So we should just be able to do top cut for all of them. Yeah, so, yeah, so this looks good. be a problem. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're getting ready to do that for middle school. We don't have high school playoffs until spring, so for the bulk of our competitions, we won't have to worry about it for a while. Cool. But middle school, we run independent seasons in fall and spring. Yeah, I think you guys so, are the. I think you guys are highlighted on our page. 
Got yeah, we're buses. weird. We do weird stuff compared to everybody else. So. <laughs> I mean, we we run full year titles for high school, so most of them are doing individual seasons, but we do full year. Yeah. Which I like, but anyway. Um, a Fortnite CSV? I know you talked about working on setting up some script to process the CSV we get from Epic. It should be working. Do you, Are you running Fortnite yet? We Yeah, we're done, but we never... We just did it manually. Oh, like, you did? There was no... Yeah. So we just shared, like, lobby code, and they joined, and then we just got the CSV. Yeah, did you upload the CSVs at all? No, we never figured out how to do that. Oh. So I just have a Google Sheet score sheet for my CSVs. Hmm. Okay. Um. You did. Oh, that's a ton of teams there. Yeah. So we just run it individual. So it's just a hundred kids in a lobby. I'd have to come through and take a look. Here, all oh, this is set up. Were there fifty-two kids in each of, in this particular season? Uh, no, I think there there's fifty-two teams that have signed up. Got it. So what we do is then we just we publish the lobby code and we say you can have up to three join because based on how many actually join, that ends up being close to right about 100. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the rosters here. Right. So they, they could have 15 people on the roster if they had 15 different kids that want to play Fortnite. We just limit them to only using three in each lobby. Got it. We did manage to get a few more um, custom accounts from Epic, so we're looking at how we can do that differently in the future, but our contact at Epic got axed in all the playoffs. So he did? Oh, no. Yeah. That's yeah. That's annoying. So that's why he never responded to us. But we managed to get a few other accounts. So in spring, we're running middle school and high school concurrently. So that will be crazy. But yeah. So we just, if you have a way for us to upload that CSV and we can do the processing here, that's great. I mean, if not, like I said, I just made a Google sheet and did some SQL queries and figured it all out so, whatever and a free for all Let's take a look at your teams here what's going on here yeah so they registered as teams but they're competing as individuals in the yeah the yeah they should this should absolutely work uh, i'm not sure what's going on here so i have all the teams in there required config set as a free for all So I just set the number of lanes equal to the number of teams we have so that they were all in that single match. Yeah. Um, they should all be showing up here. I'm not sure what's going on. You mean if we had the API, like the account tags and stuff? Uh, no, they should all be on the list right there. Um, Oh, you're looking at which week are you looking at the first one? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they normally are. You know, we should have like all of them populating this list. Right. Uh, something has changed recently because they used to all. Yep. That's image editing stuff. We're not running Fortnite again until mid-January, so. Hmm, <laughs> something crazy going on here. Um, I will, I'll keep an eye on this. Um, I do have Illinois that's spinning up theirs as well. And I know that they're gonna be demanding the CSV stuff works. It was working earlier a couple months ago when I was helping another league out. I will double check this. So, why we're not seeing our lists here should be free for all I should have all of them in here i will make a note yeah i guess that's that's a recent change because it was working fine mm -hmm. um, just a few weeks ago but 
but then once once we get that figured out then you'll give me some documentation on how to do the csv upload or do i just do like a proof of results file upload with the csv yeah um i can show you okay. what, what that looks like in the free-for-all how the format you're doing it um it would look like let's go to the vision a here so this is what yeah, see it's working over here so, so there's some setting that's not matching up correctly so this is same premise all of the right. so if i go to like division a they register as a team so they have well, we can next that they had 12 teams showing up and then each team provided whatever so these are all the players they just don't have custom avatars um yeah. the csv file here basically is Signing all this game data. Cool. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah. Okay. Cool. I should have. Am I not logged in? Yeah, I'll come through. We'll take a look at these things. Yeah. Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite is rough. I hate it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just like. I mean, if Epic would fully support us, that'd be great, so that we could run enough lobbies to make it make sense. But, you know, when we have 60 schools that want to run Fortnite, I mean... Yeah, that's crazy. I'd love to run squads, but, you know, we need six lobbies or something like that to do it. Yeah. All right, I'll take a look at the Fortnite stuff, because I, I do have a meeting with okay. Illinois here this week. Uh, well, probably today or tomorrow to go over it so it'll get touched here in a bit so all right cool yeah i mean like i said it's no big deal we just did google sheets and i just published the final tab of the google sheet for now yeah that's cool um yeah and marty i saw your message in our channel um we can try to figure something out we have uh 17 new schools we're onboarding next week because oh, yes. everyone okay. chose next week um <laughs> oh so, yeah We've got like well, four or five per night, so I don't know. We'll take a look. We could go. We could go to the following week, um, if that's better. If you're if you're cramming all those into next week, yeah. Uh, the week of the fourth is is cool with me. Um, since you're here, um, I wanted to uh, ask your advice and also uh, Datrix and uh, and Trey. Uh, but it looks like Trey's driving and listening on the road so no need to um endanger yourself trey if you're okay just listening or if you want to be moved up just let us know um well have we talked about this i believe on the last office hours uh Datrix and trey this will be new for you guys um but uh we have a, a new thing that we're rolling out um it starts with a request for graduation year, high school graduation year, across each of our leagues to standardize that piece of information because it's often been asked for in different ways in different leagues. And we have an interest in standardizing it because we see an opportunity with how many K-12 leagues that we have and how many collegiate leagues that we have uh, and conferences that we have, including bringing on the uh, the NJCAAE, which is all the two-year community and technical schools and their esports programs. We see an opportunity to really help students find opportunities to participate at the next level. So um, starting with the graduation year, that allows us to have a key piece of information. Um, and we want to uh, give you guys all the information I can uh, to share with your coaches um, about why that that information is being asked for. Um, Wilhelm, we talked about it last time. Uh, it'll be, it's a prompt. Yeah, here we go. We got some. Um, yeah, that's the second one, I think, right, Joel? Go to the first one. Um, he doesn't have a prompt for the okay. first one, or does he? He doesn't have a design for the first one. No. no. So, so basically, I log in, and let me know if if any of you, the other guys want to get brought up on stage. We can just have a talk about this. But, um, at login, 
uh, once we turn this on a league by league basis, uh, next login, everybody's asked for their graduation year. Uh, we need to ask everybody because all the Discord logins, uh, we don't get a birth date. All we, we just know that they're supposed to be over 13, but we don't get a birth date, so we can't make a guess uh, on every account, whether they are a student or a coach. So, so coaches will be met with the same prompt as students, um, but we will identify based on graduation year uh, if you're a student. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's the prompt that Joel's showing right now. Um, calling it LOS College Portal now, uh, actually. We're making it a little bit more specific. Um, but we'll ask for a graduation year, and then that will, then we'll, we'll route uh, from there to an invitation to see your prospect profile if you're a student uh, and manage who can see it. Um, for coaches, uh, we're working on routing coaches separately to a screen where they can see all their players and how their players are participating in this portal that allows them to seek out opportunities. So you have a kind of a player management system. Um, so that's something we're looking to turn on league by league. Wilhelm, we talked about that last time, giving you a little bit more information this time. Any questions before I keep going on this? No, that makes sense. Okay. Um, and Atrix, Trey, feel free to jump in. Um, so because of this, uh, again, want to provide information to your coaches. My hope is that uh, I will send you guys some information and then you guys can uh, forward that to your your coach email list. Um, first advice that I need from you guys is based on where we are the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, does it make any sense to try to get that information out um, before the holiday or do we just plan to have that go out early next week? Uh, interested from a standpoint of like you know when do you think your coaches are going to be able to process information um would that yeah. be and we're in off season now too so our, we have a coaches meeting on december 20th so we'll make sure we bring it up then and we can share it before then but yeah a lot of coaches won't necessarily see it and process it until we have like a discussion about it on the 20th probably okay that makes sense um, yeah, we would want to, uh, um, basically line up the turning on of that prompt, you know, with sending out the information, uh, so that at least the information's out there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if players are naturally going and logging into the league to kind of look ahead or look back and see stuff, you know, then, then they would be met with it, but, um, just don't want to do that without without the information going out. Um, also have a mind to have a version of that to go out to parents um, and guardians. Uh, you guys have separate email lists for parents and guardians? Uh, I mean, we have separate lists. We normally send the same thing out, but I mean, we could separate them. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you would um, we, we might want to tailor the message a little bit different for guardians. The reason that we want to inform them, uh, first of all, uh, it's exciting to know that there are opportunities in college to continue playing and opportunities that might be available that wouldn't otherwise be available in college, but also that there are scholarships. Um, and uh, wanting to just make sure that anybody that hasn't heard about that or doesn't know about that can and know that there are real opportunities and we're trying to help everybody find those opportunities. So here's an example of a college profile design. So the colleges that, uh, and actually we will have all the colleges in our system will have profiles, but this is an enhanced profile where the college is actually paying to be able to share a lot more information. Um, and you know, this is, this is us finding a way to monetize effectively uh, in a way that, you know, uh, 
where there is budget uh, and and interest in in paying, um, and the colleges are obviously maintaining esports programs to attract students, right? And so uh, we see this as a as a good way to um, build a model around something that is needed and appreciated. And the college coaches are all super excited about this as well. So <clears throat> so you'll see all the different ways that a college could be, a uh, profile could be viewed, um, all the information, uh, students and, and high school coaches and parents will be able to search for schools and see what kind of requirements they have, what levels of play uh, that they're, uh, they require for their various teams. So things that you would imagine on the profile side. Um, so uh, wanting to make sure parents understand that um, well, if you could go to the player profile. The design or the real one? <laughs> I did I did walk them through the prospect stuff a bit earlier before you while you were gone, potentially. So they you did. Okay. Yeah, they got a spiel from me about it. <laughs> oh good good. Well I wanted to just make sure. So the so the, um, after graduation year we're looking for a status to be set. Um, what's important about the status is uh, if the student is interested in seeking out opportunities and being contacted by opportunities, we want to make sure that a parent or guardian is is included in that. And so, if they're if they're under eighteen, so uh, we do ask for. I don't know if you can show that prompt, Joel, but yeah, if you if, if the student comes in flex looking for team, uh, I can't actually. I can just change my birthday. Hold on. Yeah, if he's over 18, it won't start. So if you're over 18, you don't get this. Um, we we may have to make, you know, we may show seniors that are over 18 this just because if we don't have their birthday, that would be a, a edge case. But um, but there is a field for attaching uh, or inviting a parent or guardian to uh, be linked so that we can enable messaging. Uh, so that's why I want to make sure we can communicate to the parents as well. Um, so what I'm thinking is I can I can send these out, uh, these explainers, um, uh, later tonight or tomorrow, so you have them, so you guys can review them, um, and then we would want to, you know, uh, plan to have those go out to those audiences uh, early next week. Um, we're just getting everything ready and we realized we kind of bumped into the to the holiday so didn't want to there you go send it out at a time where it's going to go okay there you go yeah that's for a, a parent email to invite to create an account and and be linked um would go uh any questions based on all of that information so the parents are going to be able to see communication that the students have with people on the platform Exactly. Parents are going to be able to see. Uh, we are also going to default uh, coaches to be able to see. Um, we have heard instances of. Curious to get you know thoughts on this. We have heard instances of of players that, for whatever reason, not one of their coaches seeing everything, um, and so um, looking at providing an opt out on that. But there would always be a guardian, at least yeah. one guardian. If that does that sound agreeable? I mean, I think yeah, you have to have that. The, the coaching yes. is negotiable. Um, okay. Is it open messaging or are they canned messages? Um, well, you've seen the canned messages we have in chat. Um, uh -huh. uh, there's going to be a, a couple. There's going to be a few different ways to to reach out, but um, all of these are uh, verified coaches, directors, and recruiters from the schools that you know that that are on the system. Uh, or that are paying, um, and that's all who will see uh, the profiles first of all, and then all the messaging will be uh, viewable, auditable if if necessary. Um, so, parent again, anyone under eighteen, a guardian will see everything, um, and so had not had not expected to make it all canned for that reason. Um, but there are some kind of yeah, so that. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's a much easier sell if they're all canned. You think, I think so? You're gonna, 
I think you're going to get some pushback if they're not. Yeah. That's what uh, the other group who you're obviously competing with does. Yeah, and we've heard um, we've heard the opposite was... that, that the frustration. Well, level... you've heard the opposite from colleges probably because oh. <laughs> they don't want to deal with the canned messages. Yeah, but from the high school perspective, a lot of these colleges are not vetting who they're hiring. Right? Like, they yeah, you're that. saying these people are on staff at a college or university. That is probably true, but you know, have they undergone background checks? What does that look like to be? Uh, a coach for this esports team on this college or university is not a substantial barricade in the eyes of a lot of K-12. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. A couple of thoughts. We could offer um, an enhanced version where college coaches could do more than can, but maybe we could run our own background checks. I'm just thinking out loud, right? Um, yeah. I think I think you need to at least think about that as you're rolling this out and, and discussing, because that's the can message side is an easy like peace of mind for us in the k-12 space but also for parents right it's like sure my kid's interacting with this person online but i know that they're only using can messages yeah we'll have to we'll have to put together a pretty large library of can messages but that's fine i think that's yeah i mean and, and again if you have some sort of other procedures in place for whatever you're calling background checks i think that's that's good too but i would be i would plan on proactively communicating that because yeah. that's a that's a pretty big differentiated point from the high school side okay. of your platform and that other one okay that's helpful yeah and yes yeah, so joe we have heard from other conversations that the the degree of confidence in the vetting process on the college side isn't necessarily high across the board so right. got it um was that let's, from let's uh, okay yeah we well, can talk about that one who that role yeah. later yeah okay that, that's good to know um very good to know and thank you Wilhelm. definitely doable obviously we, we do it in other areas so we hadn't haven't built that process yet and it's been one of those trying to approach it uh, methodically carefully and with feedback early before it gets unleashed on the world so thank you for that feedback to make sure we're doing it right yeah. on the, on time so yeah. Glad you guys are here. Daytrix, do you want to be up on stage? Do you have anything you want to say live on this? Happy to move you up. Okay. I think I know how to do it. Do I know how to do it? I got it. There we go. Great. Cool. Um, yeah, it's somewhat the same thing as Wilhelm said, just in terms of uh, can responses, I think is nice. Um, and then it's hard. It'd be hard to kind of put the cell in of, you know, maybe it's we kind of push it towards coaches a little bit. But, you know, if if yeah yeah just struggle with having a parent make an account and assign it and whatever because then a kid just puts in their fake account and says oh i want to be able to have you know real conversations as i can um i see sure sure but, so but that's kind of again it's hard how do you actually verify that you know that email that the kid put in is truly their parent email or their coach's email or maybe that's you know maybe it's a thing that coaches can unlock is just like yeah they can have a this is a obvious there is an interest and so maybe that's what it is is like yes there's a there is an interest and there needs to be a you know you can have a better conversation at that point in time instead of just yeah. hi are you interested in insert school here ah. <laughs> we offer these options check out our profile it goes the kid says hey yeah actually i am interested in you know Boise State University. I'd love to, you know, talk more with this coach, and you know, maybe it's a it's an unlock that. You know, it, a, a, and maybe there's a way to have a coach like assume responsibility, right? If like if the coach is independently verified with a parent, like, hey, yeah, I want my student to be involved in this or whatever, but they're not going to do it. Maybe there's a way for the player to to prompt a coach to be involved, right? Like you were yeah. talking about, not necessarily having all coaches involved, but for that prompt to then say, well, the coach can check off a, a box or whatever in the platform that says they have independent verification from the parents that you know, yeah. this uncanned chat can occur or something like that. Yeah, that yeah. that would be like, I think an opportunity or a feature or an unlock by like a coach or a parent. So if the parent gets connected, oh no, no, but you're saying that and, the, the parent, the parents could be faked, which is true. Yeah. But the, yeah. but the coaches can't, unless the coaches are also verifying the parents email yeah, right. there's, there's kind of chaos Which, there 
How many kids have credit cards? Uh, credit or debit? A lot. Uh, yeah. Just credit. Or just credit? Or, or, or have a credit. Uh, I'm not, I can tell if it's, if it's a debit card. I, there's always like, there's a few different methods for verifying adulthood. <laughs> credit card has been <laughs> right. one, but that's usually for like over 13, 13 and over. That's like for COPPA. That's one of the approved methods is to take a credit card number um, oh. and to charge it because it's assumed that a kid under 13 isn't going to have access to that. Um, I find that funny, but um go steals mom and dad's wallet you know <laughs> right yeah that's all it takes uh, no, i, I kind of like the idea of almost of you know if kid puts in a parent's thing and then a coach could approve that that yes that is a you know that is the kid's parents email and we have you know, had there this... is some, yeah, there we... is some work around on that if a lot of kids know their parents email passwords and so you know <laughs> there we... is that but, we do have um we have had a like this guardian process in previous versions um it's kind of fallen by the wayside um but it actually did require an email address and then there'd be an, a link that was opened with that email that was sent and it would actually record a video on the mobile device um oh. and we'd give a little script that would have to be read by the parent you know it'd say like i joel stewart approve of my kid you know netizen zero one to play in this league and i understand blah 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 like we we provide a little script for them to read we upload that video along with all of the um you know adjacent information around like ip addresses all that all that critical tracking type data throw it in a secure place um for future reference but we could resurrect some things like that but i i don't know if i'll do that but what i'm saying is i think that we can get smart Er than the kid at some point, um, but I do like I do think that the the obvious solution, which is sitting in front of us, is that all of the stu- school leagues like Indiana um, and I know already have the coaches set up correctly, and those are presumably the adults in the room, and we can trust that those are the adults in the room based upon your your guidance at that level. So the coaches should be the ones to come through and validate either the parents are good to go or that freeform or uncanned chat could occur uh, at some point with a kid if it was getting to where it needed to happen. But um, yeah, I, I like this idea though. We default to can chat and then we figure out an appropriate way to let it be elevated to freeform chat if the if, if a certain set of circumstances can be achieved. So, yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. If there's interest, then yeah, we can. And like you said, like it doesn't, it's not that the coach has to be involved with the conversation, but they can just say, yes, this conversation can occur. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's like some of my kids' parents will never be involved in something like that with the platform. Like they would email me and say, like, yeah, sure, this is fine, but they wouldn't go in and, and opt in manually and be a part of that. So I think yeah. a way for us to be able to bear the burden of getting consent and like conveying that consent is helpful for a lot of kids. Have you guys played that role in, in the past, either on the, you know, the other competitor that we've not talked um, about? Some, yeah. I have not. However, I have a kid right now that I'm in the middle of, you know, trying to find him a school. Right. So mm. I'm trying to figure that out. We'd love to give you a, um, early access to try this stuff out. Uh, we've got a lot of schools that are going to be jumping in soon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'd be providing that fully searchable database to find the right school, help you help you identify some stuff there for you. I think that'd be super fun to experiment with you on that one. Um, okay. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sports Engine. Um, we know the co-founder, original co-founder of Sports Engine, while well, he's an advisor, an investor, um, but they figured this out in traditional sports. Um, their model was uh, well, first of all, they always got a, a parent or a guardian at registration because that was just the model. You know, they were registering and paying for their, their kid. So they, they had that attached already. But then with with blended families and even nannies and all kinds of things, different people that were responsible for, um, you know, moving the kids around, whatever, uh, they would allow any guardian to add another guardian. Um, uh, but also any guardian could take another guardian away. Um, so, you know, different guardians might have 
permission to kind of oversee different kids, depending again on blended families. It was interesting. I mean, there's so many different ways this could work, <laughs> but uh, the one rule was that the guardian can't remove themselves. So, um, so there's always going to be one guardian, at least. But the, there could be the ability to add more. I don't know if you guys have any experience with that on other in other situations, but but that's a time honored approach that was sort of you know figured out over time from Sports Engine, and we've got inside track on that. So that's just another side of this where it can get it can get complicated, but that's a simple way to kind of solve it. We we specifically for our school district we have like online registrations and they can edit like stuff about their their the other contacts uh however it they cannot remove a guardian um without going through our office just in case there's a bitter breakup happening or something like that i was gonna and, say some right parental units not whatever. agreeing <laughs> yeah like parental parental units having their own fights on the high end um yeah we prevent we actually just straight up say nope and if you need to remove you know, Johnny's dad from the list, you need to bring in, you know, documentation that he should no longer have access to this child. Got it. And so just to a little more issue. labor intensive on that. Yeah, I think I think for some that did come up in sports engine basically went with, you know, yeah, that could happen. Somebody might get removed out of in, you know, because of some sort of dispute. Um, but then they can always be added back, right? Um, and I think they they were able to just kind of stay out of the fray of that as a result. So I'll, I'll dive deeper into that too, but that's helpful reference from how you guys do it. And we would obviously have to kind of like figure out how to check reasoning if we wanted right. to go that way. Yeah. Okay. Or even, you know, I don't know if you do it. It was just approval from the person that's has guardianship that's being removed. Like, hey, you're being removed from this account. Should that be happening? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, you you turned on record on this, right? I haven't been able. To, I don't want to type away and yeah, make yeah. noisy notes. But, yeah, I got right, it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you guys for for we probably, sharing all probably, this. We probably um, won't upload this one. This one we'll probably keep um, to ourselves. We won't upload this part of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but good for us to have. Um, well, yeah. So, and I and I know I missed a little bit of Joel giving you guys a, a first look around, but. Um, um, but we have the student profiles. Uh, they are ready. We're working on the college profiles next. Um, and so we are looking to turn on the request for graduation year and the ability to kind of follow through and see what's out there. Um, we are providing, you know, an ability to just opt out of this completely. Uh, so any student that's just like, I want no part of this. I don't want to be involved in any searches or anything like that. They've got that ability, um, and um, if they're under 18 and, and wanting to, you know, like we said, wanting to right. seek uh, connections, then, you know, a guardian gets involved or not, we, we'll figure out a way to have a coach, you know, stand in like we we're talking about. So this is all super helpful. Um, any other uh, questions or watch outs or things that you didn't have from other solutions that you wish you had for all years on that. Um, I'll let you know. Um, cool. Just cool. looking at, I don't know. I don't know if you can hear my kids in the back. Sorry if you can. Um, <laughs> I see that you have, I'm just looking at the, the kid side, uh, the kid profile thing, looking under my own, mm -hmm. where it has GPA unweighted. I don't know if it, there's just a wide range of what weighted and unweighted means. Um, cause I'm just thinking, you know, some, a lot of my kids take AP classes and dual credit classes and it boosts their, un, their weighted GPA. I don't, know, I don't know if you've heard from colleges that they don't care about weighted. I haven't, I haven't gotten feedback on that. My initial kind of cursory search on the internets kind of revealed that most admissions offices understand when they see a weighted GPA and they'll immediately, uh, unweight it. So. Yeah. Um, but for the sake of like being a searchable uh, kind of criteria, um, mm -hmm. it felt like the unweighted was the more appropriate one to put in. But I would I would guess that a kid who has like let's say you know a four two or something because they have a they have a five zero class in there, that's just a four zero, right? I mean they're just gonna normalize that and assume that it's an AP class and just say I'm I'm over four, so I'm just gonna give myself a four zero, which is more or less accurate. 
right? Okay. Yeah, that works. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, and just the, yeah, it, it yeah, it just gets weird. I guess is like whenever you go through all of high school, it just starts getting a little more like I don't know. It takes shows that you take more of them instead of if you had like a four point oh one. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of get it. Yeah, and I'm also not exactly sure. Like the reason the GPA we're asking that is because there are some scholarships that we know have GPA requirements, right? You need to be yeah. a you know a three two, maintain a three point two or whatever. But for the most part, it's going to be you know on the higher end. So a kid who's dealing with you know any sort of like weighted GPA that's above a four, they're mm-hmm. most likely just going to immediately qualify. So it's it's right. more or less going to just kind of help the kids that maybe don't qualify for a scholarship because their GPA isn't high enough. They're not probably taking AP classes, so they're most likely going to put in the correct one, which will be, you know, a 2.8, a 2.9, maybe a 3.2 or something. I don't know. Um, right. So I don't That's know. Where, I don't, I'm not really sure. It's going to be one of those things we're going to have to experiment with um, as we go. But, I mean, I get that. Yeah. It's been, it's been a while since I've been in high school, Ugh, you know. <laughs> <laughs>